Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Tia Feynman, I'm Gavin Ojo, and today we are here to talk to you about the repercussions of single-use plastic cups. The majority of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the phrase, America runs on Duncan, and you might even find yourself ending up in a Duncan drive through every morning before school, and that's normal for Americans. The average individual consumes at least two cups of coffee per day, and it's become a habit to wake up and the first thing you do is grab a steaming hot cup of coffee. With 400 million coffee drinkers a day, 2 billion 500 million single-use cups are disposed of each year, 5,000 each minute and 83 each second. People don't even think twice before purchasing these cups because it's so much easier. The coffee is made for you and you can just throw it out when you're done. And because of these factors, the serious impacts aren't thought of. Now, we aren't just standing up here to try to convince you not to buy coffee, but we want to change what you purchase the cups in. So where does this waste go? Landfills. So there's three billion, three million people that get Duncan every night. That equates to up to one million per year. So if everyone just throws that in the trash and the trash truck comes along and picks it up, that's one billion coffee cups going into the landfill every year. So you may think to yourself, if the cup's just sitting in the landfill, why is it harmful to us? Well, landfills produce many emissions, and today we're going to be talking about methane emissions. It's actually much more harmful than CO2 emissions because they um, penetrate the atmosphere at a much higher rate, and that causes heat and sun rays to come in to the earth. So with the UV, UV rays penetrating the ozone layer, that causes polar bears to die because their ice caps are melting. That causes many sea creatures to die up in the pools. Additionally, this harms people too, because if you live in close proximity to a landfill, then the um, oxygen levels are actually much lower and the methane layers are higher, so you're at a higher chance of getting respiratory diseases and cancer. So the second place that these single-use plastics end up in is our oceans. Of course, there's more than just paper and plastic cups that end up in our oceans, but this will be the tip of your focus on today. Okay, so say this container of water is an ocean. And so say this is your plastic cup that you get your coffee in. And so it just, well, it just floats around in the ocean. It doesn't really dissolve. After maybe 30 years, it will end up dissolving but it just floats around like this. Plastic in our ocean creates many problems. First being, it pollutes our oceans. It's not just one cup, it's hundreds of thousands that have accumulated over decades, and they don't just disappear. They end up in places like the Pacific Garbage Patch, and this not only destroys animal habitats, but it's killing them as well. The plastic cups have actually made its way into our food system. As you can see, the smaller fish might mistake the plastic cups for food. Once it eats it, maybe a bigger fish comes along and eats that fish. More animals eat the fish, even humans that eat the fish, gets into our system. So a lot of companies have been moving towards paper cups because they think it's better for the environment, but that's actually misleading. So back to the ocean over here. Um, so you would think this is paper, right? If you put paper in the ocean, it's just going to become all soggy, and then it's going to eventually dissolve into little pieces. So that's what people think that happens to this paper cup. So if you put the paper cup in, you dump it in the water. It's not the same as this soggy piece of paper. And that is because there's actually a very small polyethylene lining within this cup, which is actually plastic. So the downside about this is because when the cups end up dissolving, over a uh, long period of time, the microplastics just go into small pieces, and that's when the fish mistake it for food, and then the birds eat the fish, and it just disrupts the, the food chain. Additionally, it affects us because we, if we go to a seafood restaurant, there's a chance that we're eating fish that has plastic inside of it. So how does this affect us? By drinking coffee, it's actually affecting us directly because you're ingesting plastic when you're ingesting coffee. A study done at the Indian Institute of Technology in Karapur showed that after 15 minutes, 25,000 pieces of microplastic actually dissolved into the coffee. So 
So if you don't drink coffee in less than 15 minutes, you're going to be ingesting 25,000 pieces of microplastic. And so that just adds to the number of plastic you're consuming. It's very bad for your immune system and for your health. And that just adds to the number of plastic you're eating. And a study was done that shows the average American actually ingests a credit card's worth of plastic every week. So what can we do to change? Companies like Starbucks and Dunkin' have tried to transition away from using plastic cups and start using paper cups. But as Gavin mentioned before, they have that small layer of polyethylene, which makes it difficult, if not impossible, to recycle. And that's how they end up in places like our landfills and oceans. But we do have some solutions. The easiest solution would be, and we encourage you all, to start regularly using reusable cups. This helps cut down so much of the problem, and it's an easy solution. You could, use, you could use any type of metal or stainless steel cup, and it helps our environment and keeps you healthier. Reusable cups are in the right direction, but you may be wondering what other companies like Duncan would do. Well, avocados, that's our solution. So you might know avocados, have it as a snack. There's guacamole, avocado toast, just might eat it by itself. But what do you do with the waste? So there's avocado pits, and then there's the excess around the avocado, which is just thrown out of it. You can put it in compost pile because it decomposes within a year, which is a chart of the avocado pits. And so, so a company called Bioface, located in Mexico, has found a way to take that avocado waste and make it into bioplastics. Not only is this perfect because it limits the avocado waste, but bioplastics are biodegradable, reduce petroleum, use less fossil fuel, as well as contain no toxic chemicals and are 100% safe for us and our environment. As of now, BioFace mainly focuses on making utensils, and the bigger picture and the next step would be to make these into plastic cups, bioplastic cups, so that places like Dunkin' and Starbucks can use them. The bioplastics can even withstand heat, so it's perfect because the cup will not melt into your drink like these false paper cups. Mexico has shifted towards banning single-use plastics, and it has had tremendous positive effects that we can look at and follow. So today we're not here to tell you to stop going to Dunkin', to stop ordering coffee. We're just telling you to stop using single-use paper and plastic cups. This will overall better the environment because it will help sea life not eat plastic. It will help the oceans, it will help the landfills, and it will help yourself because you will end up ingesting less plastic. So by investing in the idea of using reusable cups, such as metal cups, and investing in the idea of avocado pits and avocado excess as cups, you will end up helping the environment. In conclusion, drink your coffee and eat your avocados. Thank you.